as a youngster, you grew up learning about tangaroa, and you were taught in primary school, he's the god of the ocean. Thought, wow, that's cool. I didn't really know what that meant, but I knew he had an important role to play in the ocean. And then in more recent times, I've learned there's this no another name for what cartographers have called the Pacific Ocean. One of our names for it is Te Moana Nui Akiwa. So, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. So there's the great oceanic expanse of Kiwa. Uh, and so in, in that whakapapa of Te Ao Māori, we have the departmental deities. I actually use that word, but I still don't really know what it means. But I know clever people that I've used it. When I try and explain it to school kids, I say, Tangaroa is like the kaitiaki of the ocean. So maybe that's one way to think about it. So we have Tangaroa, and then we have people like Kiwa. And in that whakapapa, I think they were a little bit further down in the whakapapa. In my understandings, Kiwa is the male essence, the male element. Then Kiwa's partner, Kiwa's hōrangatira, is Hinemoana. I know others have different names for that. Within that framing of what is unique to the ocean, that to me is what's unique to the ocean from a te ao Māori view, is that we have a kaitiaki. I've heard a framing that says Tangaroa is a kaitiaki of the organisms in, in the ocean. Te Moana Nui Akiwa is the physical, the body of water that's enriched with sodium chloride and all those other dissolved minerals and things. And then the personification of that body of water is Hine Moana. To me, that's an elegant and simple and beautiful way to understand that extremely complex myriad of relationships and networks that comprises what we might otherwise simply say is the moana.